Here's what's coming up on episode 88 of the Big Seance Podcast. Katie and Ty from Haunt Me, the web series. We, we talked briefly about let's bring this together. Ash was like, I know people who are super into like the occult and they know a lot about magic and spirits. And like our friend from high school went to NYU for film production. Let's bring him in. Let's bring all these resources together and be like, we could make this a show. Let's do it. You could watch the fog roll over you. It was like, I don't know. It was like living in another dimension. It was ghostly. Mm-hmm. It, was, it really yeah. was. Yeah. It was out of control. There, I've never seen traditional paranormal investigation use tarot cards before, which is cool. It's a really great way to kind of like, even if you're not trying to use it to physically communicate, but to kind of get a grasp on who's around you. And the first card I pulled was the lovers. So a card from the major arcana, a card of destiny and fate, you know, um, of, you know, two people. And I was like, okay, are we like actually dealing with this couple right now? And as you learn more about each other, you develop trust and you develop conversational skills with something who maybe has been trying to reach out to someone and have this conversation for decades. We've done three seasons. If you don't believe ghosts are real yet, stop watching our show. We're done, to, we're done trying to convince you. We're coming back in and we're going to try to help the things that we're interacting with and help the people who have to interact with them on a daily basis. Welcome to the Big Seance Podcast. I'm Patrick Keller of BigSeance.com, and this is a place for an open discussion on all things paranormal, but specifically topics like ghosts and hauntings, paranormal research, spirit communication, psychics and mediums, and life after death. So basically, anything that pops up in my paranormal world. The candles are already lit, so you might as well come on in and join the seance. Welcome, Paranerds. We've gained quite a few listeners in the last month or two, and so if you've joined us recently, or if this is your first brave peek into our seance parlor here, then I want to thank you for stopping by. We're very glad to have you. And if you haven't found our Facebook group for the biggest Paranerds out there, look for the Big Seance Parlor, knock a few times, and we'll let you in. I'll put the link in the show notes for this episode. Listen, this episode is a little longer than usual, and after the interview, I'm still going to throw in a brand new Spectral Edition from Tim Prossel, so we've got to get started. Haunt Me is a web series airing online and on local Maine public access TV, focusing on notable and historical Maine locations with possible paranormal activity attached to them. Their team utilizes a combination of techniques to gather information about the phenomena, including extensive research and an investigation that makes use of both scientific and metaphysical tools. They document their findings and present them to offer some insight into the potential cause of the unexplained activity. They have three seasons under their belt, and they're super excited to start dropping season number four, which I hear is going to be next month. Hey, it's me, and I'm breaking in here from the future to uh, give you some news that I just found out right before I published this episode, just in time. What you just heard was a lie. Haunt Me Season 4 is going to be released on May 1st. I think a little later you might hear that it's going to be released at the end of April, and I wasn't sure of an exact date uh, at the time of the interview. So look forward to it on May 1st. So excited. Okay, here we go for real. Back to your regular programming. If you were like me, you aren't even entirely sure what a web series is. And if you're into all the paranormal shows, you probably don't even know that this cool series is there waiting for you right now. Their website is haunt-me.com. Well, two of the Haunt Me team members, Ty Gowan, the team's tech analyst, and Katie Webb, who holds the title of occultist, well, they're here in the parlor today. 
So get your tea or coffee poured. Hey, Katie. Hey, Ty. How's it going? Great. Hey. (laughs) (laughs) I am so excited to talk to you guys. But first, do you guys care for some tea or coffee? Do you have a uh, preference? I'm a tea guy. Yeah, I'm coffee all day, all the way. Oh, so we get to use both tonight. And uh, now I get to offer you Ty. Well, I guess both of you. I get to offer you like Splenda, sugar, sugar cubes. In the seance room? I'll take, I do tea with honey. Ooh, Ooh, Mm -hmm. we've got some honey here. Yeah, we have one of those modern seance rooms with, you know, Splenda and. That's good. So I don't have to like adjust my ascot right now. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm wearing some seance sweats right now, in fact. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, we're, we're well, does pretty... that mean I get to ask for a cappuccino instead of a coffee? Hey, you know, you, if you finish that coffee, maybe we can follow it up with a cappuccino. Ask Sounds the spirits, good. Katie. Sounds good. Tip that table. <laughs> That'll give me the opportunities to search for some new sound effects. Cappuccino <laughs> sound effects. So uh, when I discovered your show, Haunt Me, the first thing I noticed was, um, shut up. How is that a show with (laughs) such great production value and some great investigation techniques? How can this be a thing and not have a production company or or network behind it? I mean, I really I really like it. I'm impressed. Thank you. Thanks so much. It's been a lot of growth um, for everyone that works on the team to to get to where we are now. We have a killer team. Yeah, they <laughs> rock both uh, the investigators that work with us and the crew that uh, films it and makes it happen. Everyone is always steps up their game and pulls out the all star card. So I couldn't be happier. Yeah, but thank you for noticing. Yeah, I really appreciate you. you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I mean, I I honestly I had no clue that something. A web series like this of that production quality existed. I didn't know that was a thing. Well, tell your friends. Yes. <laughs> Are you guys the lone show out there like this? Oh, we can't be. No I, way. I, I don't think. I mean, no. there, there's such a good movement in the web series um, genre right now. I, I think it, we're kind of an anomaly in the fact that we are um, a paranormal documentary show. Sure. Um, but like there's there's a network in Maine that we're on called the Entertainment Experiment that goes out and seeks out uh, talented web series that and pulls stuff together, both yeah. nonfiction and fiction. There's a lot of fun on there. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And like searching the web, like people pour their souls into web series, much like podcasts right now. It's just mm-hmm. alternative <laughs> way to stream um, content from people who don't, you know, have a large voice a lot of times. So we still have a t- story to tell and we're going to tell it. Well, cool. I can only imagine if I'm because I'm a giant paranerd. And if I didn't know that a lot of these shows exist, I I bet there's a lot of paranormal peeps out there that think that any paranormal content like this that they're going to consume has to be on a TV network, you know, so maybe we should all kind of do a search. I think, yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of validation that people attach to television in particular. Um, I think judging, especially in the paranormal circuit, um, we get asked all the time what show we're on. And so, you know, oh, we're on, we're on Haunt Me. And then from there, it's like, oh, what channel can I find you out? (laughs) It's like, oh, www. And they're like, (laughs) no, like, I want to watch it on my TV. And I was like, but get this, you can watch it anytime (laughs) for free. (laughs) (laughs) That's a on de- you can binge it, man. On demand, yes. no subscription Honestly, needed. Better than TV. I- I'm, you know, this binging thing is huge, and now podcasts, you know, are starting to get to the point where they don't release anything until they've, you know, recorded not all of them, but I mean, some podcasts are like recording ten at a time and then releasing them to see if that affects how people consume them so but you guys probably do release gradually don't you yeah we do we do um one every two weeks during our season um and then in the off weeks there's something 
usually me hurting myself called tie Tuesday. So <laughs> it'll either, are a lot of it'll be behind the scenes of an episode or just uh, something ridiculous. The, the cast and I get together to do. Um, but it, it's basically, we try to make our seasons double the length of how many episodes there are. So we're trying to stream content into our viewers because they deserve the loyalty that they've shown us is incredible. So we want to basically make sure that they're always fulfilled with what they need when we're rocking a haunt me season. And so if that's me and Carol jumping into the ocean in March, um, <laughs> they can have it or me and Katie eating skunk flavored jelly beans. This is the behind the scenes of haunt me. So, it's real. It's yeah. all out there. Yeah. <laughs> Those are real scenarios. <laughs> oh my God. Skunk flavored jelly beans. That's it hot. Was it insane. burned. It uh. burned the throat. It, it was horrible. I think you puked. I wanted to. I don't. I, they would have been way better because I couldn't get that stink out of my mouth. It was. <laughs> it was awful. Yeah. Ghosts don't scare me anymore. Those jelly beans are my number one spot. <laughs> and so something else I love about this web series is that everyone involved seems to be so honest. And for example, what I mean by that is mentioning things that, you know, everyone is learning as you guys have gone along, um, how everyone Ashley's mentioned, how everyone has grown from season one and nobody appears to take on this, you know, I am the expert attitude, which is kind of cool. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like the paranormal is such like a, you know, it's such a personal genre that it's really hard to like be an expert. There's always something changing. There's always something you never knew and you've just got to remain open. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, everything that we've learned is theories put to test by either us or other people. It's like people, I think, unfortunately, a lot of times in the paranormal field, people have the inclination to close themselves off and silo themselves off away and create like a, a team. And that team is the boss team of that area and they're in control of these certain the haunted locations but that's not a, a conducive way to learn and grow from the paranormal community like we are weirdos among weirdos and so if you don't let your freak flag fly like you're never going to be able to learn the most that you can from this upcoming field that you know 20 years ago wasn't talked about 10 years ago was still a mystery and now is finally reaching the mainstream pop culture so people can come out mm -hmm. and tell, talk about their experiences without being labeled a freak and i think that the more you closet yourself away and try to hide from other experts and shut down other people's opinions you'll never grow in in the field at all and you'll stay stagnant in whatever year you decide to hold on to those beliefs in and there's something about like a trust level that we try to achieve with our audience and so yeah. being really just honest and just putting everything out there whether we find no evidence or we find some or we didn't know something and saying those things really helps us to gain that trust because we need it. We're yeah. presenting you with a lot of like personal experiences. And what is that to you? If you just have no idea who we are, or what we stand for, or what we even like think, you know, Absolutely. so there's a, there's a level of like humanness that has to be a, achieved through the screen. Right. I like to say like our audience owes us nothing. We owe, <laughs> yeah, we owe them everything. If we're, and we started right from the start being very, very straightforward, you're going to see what happens to us. If no, if that is nothing, then you get to see... You get to watch that. Just get to watch us hang out and try not to fall asleep or fart on camera. Like, that is the essence of Haunt Me, is, like, burping and... Like, is it like that? that's our show, is, like, there's ghosts sometimes, there's amazing legends all the time. All the time. But we spend one night in a location and the show that we have is the reflection of the time we've spent in the place. Our viewers don't know enough now that yeah. what you see is wh exactly what happened to us. No spin, no need for it. Well, I love that because too many people now, even people who form their own paranormal teams uh, have the idea from watching television that every single investigation is going to have a chair that scoots across the floor yeah. or something, right. you know? If that was true, I would have stopped a long time ago. I am. <laughs> I I think Carol likes to say 
I will always run away from danger, but I will run back when I calm down. So <laughs> I, I won't leave my team to die, but holy crap, I, the scary stuff out there, Patrick. Yeah. And one thing that it also makes me think of is, you know, in some of these shows, their evidence review just, you know, magically happens in like two hours. And, <laughs> you know, I remember some when I was involved, I remember some investigations where a month later, I'm still reviewing uh, reviewing evidence and not even learning some yeah. of the evidence or EVPs until way later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to re-listen to your entire investigation. <laughs> Which is like, way less fun than standing in so it. So much less fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yep. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if those people on uh, ghost adventures and ghost hunters, especially back in the day when they used to make a bigger deal about the evidence review. I wondered if they had like, you know, 27 producers just sitting in a truck with like a whole bunch of computers and <laughs> equipment oh going God. through all yeah. of the evidence review. Uh, you gotta outsource that shit. <laughs> and if someone could yeah. sit and listen to our EVPs for oh, us, that mm-hmm. would be next level. <laughs> does it say Bob or does it say Bud? <laughs> <laughs> Well, who pulled the team together and and did everyone know each other? No, that was the best part of all this. Mm -hmm. I've made some of my best friends that I will ever make in this lifetime. Um, Ashley Brooks pulled all this together. She's our team leader. Um, It was five years ago at this point. The origin of this all went down. Like All of us have had experiences or an interest in the paranormal all of our lives. Obviously, you know, stuff was going on. For me, I wanted a life like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, so when I was in college... Oh, started, you're one of those. Okay. I'm just I am kidding, one sir. of those. No, <laughs> I am a proud weed knight. So when I was in college, um, Ghost Hunters was on, and I was I was watching this show, and I was like, this is incredible. This is stuff that's happened to me my whole life, but now people are finally talking about it. Um, I took... I, I did off and on investigations, um, and then when I graduated, I joined a local team to learn a little bit more, expand my knowledge base, and that's where I met Carol, who's on our show. We went probably for about two years. We investigated as a team together, and then on Ashley's 24th birthday, I think it was, I um, my gift to her was taking her to a place called the Bridgewater Triangle in Massachusetts. It was it was messed up night, but <laughs> as for as scary as it was, Ash had a gleam in her eye that I know she was hooked at the same time. Um, and when she got back, um, we we talked briefly about let's bring this together. Ash was like, I know people who, you know, are super into like the occult and and they know a lot about magic and spirits. And like um, our friend from high school went to NYU for film production. Let's bring him in. Let's bring all these resources together and be like, we could make this a show. Let's do it. To which I said, who's going to watch that? <laughs> and um, it was actually really cool because we made it happen. And I remember the first night we pulled everyone together. I met Katie at our first team meeting <laughs> and I taught people, um, everyone that was there, how to do EVP um, yep. analysis. And we sat in a room. We listened to your Waverly. My Waverly and- Hills EVPs. Yeah. And- wow. <laughs> I let them sit there and I like waited for them to find like the crying and the moaning and the words. And then we all talked about it after they were like, we we're all jazzed to go. And then we did our first investigation <laughs> at Carol's mom's house. <laughs> and that was the beginning of haunt me. Yeah, that's, that's part of that honesty that I love because I saw yep. that and I was like, they straight up just filmed their first investigation. And that makes me laugh because my team's first investigation was at my parents' house. Yeah. <laughs> yes, kindred spirit right there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, nothing nothing went on, but we definitely had an investigation at the house. Yeah. I, loved, I expected nothing. We um, had the mirror drop. The mirror drop, it went, mm. and that was for the first time I was on a team with Katie sitting in the dark. And this this Katie, Katie was asking for something to happen, and a mirror fell off the wall, and I was done like, <laughs> it was all set. so let's back up a tad and why don't you tell us we know now because you mentioned it earlier that there are some behind the scenes folks involved here right yep. so so we'll we'll get to that in just a second but tell us there's four main investigators right yeah yep. mm-hmm. and what can you tell us about the roles of each investigator absolutely sure so like ashley is our leader and she is doing a lot of the history for the locations um, this now. Mm-hmm. 
and she um, so she'll present us with a lot of evidence. So like if we get some information on a ghost hunt where it's like John, she'll go back and kind of find out like if John is relevant to the location and things like that. Um, I am your occultist. So I, I like how you said that in like in a big seance vibe. uh, (laughs) You fit right in here in the parlor. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, I'm practicing witch and I bring all of my witchiness to our ghost hunts and metaphysical, you know, (laughs) Ness, <laughs> my <laughs> metaphysical nature to the ghost hunts. I've come to just, dis- I've come to realize that using tarot cards to communicate with spirits is actually feasible and a really nice source of kind of poking and prodding at them to kind of perform for you if you want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, um, not really perform. It's like an, that sounds rude, it's but like, like to kind of, yeah, to kind of like get them to like realize that. Ah, oh, maybe you do know something about them, and maybe you are worth talking to. Ty is like tech all day, all the way. I feel like he has a new surprise every ghost hunt. I like gadgets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but um, it works so off much well, gear. Though. Yeah, because like Katie has a metaphysical feeling. I rush over the gear. It sets off. We move along with the investigation. It, you know, yeah. it, they bounce off of one another perfectly. Mm-hmm. And then Carol is a jack of all trades, really. Yeah, we, I mean the fancy name and the oh my god, I'm gonna mispronounce it. Oh, menesiologist is never shut could've. up. What is that? Right, I never yeah. could have said that. Yes, so that is Carol's a quarter- menesiologist. It's funny because she can't say it. No, so. she can't. Say it. <laughs> no. She can't say the rating system. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Carol, so much. <laughs> in, in true me fashion, I assigned her a title that she can't pronounce. So. <laughs> that, is, that is their relationship. But she's like a magnet. They, oh, like, yeah. Spears just instantly trust her. She has such a long history with ghost hunting, and her instincts are really strong. So she's like an anchor. And she'll fight for you, too. Like She's, yes. the, she's the scrappy-do of our, our Scooby team. <laughs> Um, so the protector, like, yeah, yeah. When you're yeah. out there with Carol, you're gonna come back safe. Yeah, and that, definitely. that's really important. Definitely. And so, one question that I have immediately, well, I guess a couple of questions that are related with this web series. You know, again, circling in my head, I'm thinking, you know, how is this funded? And is it just the four of them that are doing all the behind the scenes stuff, or is there a crew? So, oh, tell us like yeah. how all that behind the scenes stuff works. Absolutely. So Haunt Me is funded both in part um, by donations, um, random Kickstarters when we need new gear. um, Random parties. Parties that we throw um, (laughs) and uh, public investigations. So usually at the end of a season um, and then again around Halloween time, we'll open up um, a place that was featured on one of the episodes and we'll bring uh, people interested in the field to come in and under the safety of our guidance um, learn ghost hunting 101 um, and those are a lot of fun, um, Super fun and they keep the show going which is is really important because everything that we earn goes right back into the show itself yeah that, which that's that's how we we keep this alive and all but the people who keep the show alive on their own are our tech crew tech crew um we have so many great people willing to help us out from our website um our, our friend krista is helping remake it right now Nick Nordfors is the genius behind the production and I the mean, editing. Genius is an understatement. It, absolutely. When uh, everyone says like, wow, I can't believe your show looks so beautiful. It's like literally Nick Nordfors. He, he pulls it all together. <laughs> uh, our friend Mike Strout was just a guy who doesn't believe in ghosts, but, <laughs> but loves shooting the show for us. And he knows his stuff. Um, so well. He knows how to composite <laughs> all of like the lighting. So it like shines away my, my oily T zone (laughs) 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 things that I don't need to be embarrassed about. He makes us look good. And then we have like the honest, the bravest people on the show are cameramen who walk and women in women, camera people, camera peeps who walk backwards (laughs) through the dark. Like when we see something terrifying, it's behind them a hundred percent of the time. (laughs) Uh, like there's no way I could like do what they do and keep a camera pointed on us. And that includes um Charlie Wittis, Anna Halloran, um, Johnny Speckman, and um Aaron Cross to to give oh, some yeah, proper yeah. shout outs. Yeah. yeah. Those are the heroes of the Haunt Me team. I'm assuming you'd have I mean, 
I'm past those days, but you'd have to be like young and fit and like, you know, balanced and limber and all those things to be able I would to say you, you stay fit running through the hallways. So yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> nothing like keeping an elevated heart rate for four hours Ooh. to burn off some calories. Well, maybe I need to get back into the game then because I definitely have some <laughs> that, calories. Come on, come on, haunt me season five. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> calories to burn. Absolutely. Ooh. We know some shady places that we can stick you in the crypt of and you'll love it. <laughs> oh, gosh. You can hike the mountain to Seguin Island. Oh, my God. Yeah. Carrying all of our equipment. Hike down to use the bathroom and then hike back up in the to dark. go. Yeah. Oh, you can do that. And that's the last episode of season three, correct? Yeah, that's what's currently out right now. Who knew that they put lighthouses at the tallest part of the island? Like, that that makes total sense, right? We had to hike. Yeah. I was, didn't expect to have to hike. I didn't I'm either. I'm not going to lie. 100%, it was a shock. <laughs> 100% humidity, 85 degree day, 40 pounds of equipment per person, <laughs> up, straight yeah. up. and Yeah. But then you said it got uh, cool in the evening, right? And it was so beautiful and the fog rolling through. Oh, my gosh. It was literally, I know this is cliche because of the state that we're doing this in, but (laughs) it was straight up a Stephen King story. Like it was a hot, beautiful day. And then the boat that had brought us disappeared, (laughs) disappeared, headed off into the darkness to leave us on the island. (laughs) And as that happened, it cooled off and the fog rolled in and the mainland vanished. The foghorn started and you couldn't see 30 feet in front of you for the rest of the night. And that it was like, we were literally living in a cloud with a lighthouse in the middle of this cloud, keeping a a very small portion of the Island lit. And that was, you could watch the fog roll over you. It was like, I don't know. It was like living in another dimension. It was ghostly. Mm. It It really was. It was out of control. It was like the epitome of dark and stormy (laughs) night. And so, yeah, for anyone who hasn't seen that episode, it would, very little sleep happens when you're stranded on an oh, island. Yeah. Yeah, so. When cameras are pointed at you while you're sleeping. Absolutely. Well, and so one thing we haven't mentioned, all of this, all of your investigations take place in the state of Maine. And so that's, it took me actually a couple of days to realize the whole play on haunt me is you you know, the abbreviation <laughs> of the state of Maine. Oh my gosh, I'm a genius. Yeah. It's a double We're entendre. Funny. Yeah, I'm super clever. <laughs> Geniuses. So, Katie, what are some of your, you know, I'm a big uh, spirit communication nerd, and I love to, not so much recently, I like to talk about it for sure, but every now and then I like to bust out some tools and some techniques for spirit communication. What is your favorite? And I know you mentioned the tarot cards earlier. I've never seen traditional paranormal investigation use tarot cards before which is cool so tell us about some of your favorite techniques i'm just gonna step away for this one this is katie's spotlight (laughs) like like, that is (laughs) oh bring it i love it because um i'm gonna say like eight out of ten times i will pull cards that actually describe the spirits and they will like even describe the history sometimes and the story but like we bring me back seguin island back up I was pulling out cards that just like told the entire story of Seguin Island and it was really wild. And the cards like you'll see in season four mm. and on Seguin Island, but cards will pop up on their own. Like cards will get pulled on their own. It's a really great way to kind of like, even if you're not trying to use it to physically communicate, but to kind of get a grasp on who's around you. Um, like at the GRCC where I'm pulling like a person card after person, 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 there's like, Oh, are we talking like 12 spirits around us right now? Cause, and we were. And we were. <laughs> so you can sit in the dark in that place and just hear 12 people circling around you with footsteps clear as day. So it's like a really cool way to kind of like kickstart without just being like, hi, I'm Katie. What's your name? Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'm like a big fan of getting them to knock. I love hearing a good knock. Yep, yep. You know, a good knock is always like... <gasps> Very scary. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Your altars, your crystals, your potions that you've been doing? I've been doing a little bit of potions. Um, They taste great, Patrick. They taste pretty good. They have, you know, they got a little brandy on the base. (laughs) 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 
<laughs> so that's they funny. Pretty good. <laughs> I'm a fan. Um, this is how, Patrick. This is how she got me into magic in season four. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to have brandy involved. Yeah, that's all it takes. Just a little spoonful of sugar, you know. I was down. <laughs> <laughs> um, the altars. Yes, I don't often use the altars to communicate because sometimes if I don't, if I can't totally like pick up on the energy of someplace, I don't want to ramp up the energy of someplace. Cause if I don't know what I'm ramping up, mm-hmm. uh, cause that can be a little terrifying. Um, a lot of time I will always 100% do like a safe space altar unless like there's like a, you know, we got a good episode season four coming where it, I didn't feel like it was necessary. So I did a ramp up. So you can see what happens with that. It ramped up. It ramped up. So, <laughs> as one might expect. <laughs> so on these altars, you might have like, I'm guessing like photos of someone involved or like what, how does the altar work? Mostly crystals. Oh, okay. Mostly crystals. Um, a little bit of herbs, a little bit of spice. Sometimes I'll incorporate like a flower. Like um, we were, we were kind of in some uncharted territory in season four. And so I brought some magnolia flowers for kind of like a protection kind of a thing, you know, mostly natural elements. I don't often have photos, but man, if I was given photos, that would be killer. Uh, season Saturday. Five. Yes. Saturday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh my God. Yes. We are, we're filming an episode in three days for, to wrap the up. The scariest episode of season one. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. We're going back. Wow. Return visit. Where, where is this? The only time I've been assaulted by a spirit was at this place. And so here we go. Put that ramp up altar out there. Again. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need protection in every single room of this house. You should tell them this with one of my favorite things. It, it, it's been a journey for me to adopt magic. It's been, I, I like to, I like to be He's able tech. to yeah. understand what I'm seeing, rationalize it, re-experiment and like, I, I need to be able to control the variables. Mm-hmm. Magic right. is a giant variable, but what I have seen that I can't prove <laughs> is that it works. Like, and so it's, I always try to figure out what's going on in a, in a scientific mindset. And then I found myself in season four when Katie says, open up, I got to put a drop of potion on your tongue. I just said, F- it. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, okay. I got to bleep. I gotta bleep. bleep. It's been four years of me trying to figure this out and how it, it works. And finally, I just realized it does. I'm rolling with it and we can get even more. We can elevate ourselves to the next level now that we're all working concisely as a team. And so one of these nights in particular that magic ruled the ruled the episode was Sigwin Island. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you want to tell them like the history of the legend there? Um, and then tell them what happened. Boy, can I remember it? My memory sucks. Well, I'll do the legend. I'll do the legend. <laughs> Story time. I know, the, I know about them. the piano and the lady. I mean, I remember it, but you. I'll you do tell the legend, them. then you do your. Me- tell them sure. how you, you met up with these people. So, the legend of Sigwin Island that first attracted us um, is it can't be corroborated, first of all, like mm. most great legends. Mm. Um, but, like all main lighthouses, there's a tragic winter that has occurred at <laughs> Sigwin Island. Um, and during the early 1800s, I believe, um, and we checked the charts, and there was a bunch of unaccounted for light keepers, um, but this story doesn't tell Truth. which one it is. Um, the light keeper was set out on this island, which is two miles off the coast of Maine. Um, and like all Maine lighthouses, they had to be manned because it, they were oil lamps back in the day. Um, so these really brave people had to live out there for the entire winter. And so this this particular legend uh, cycles around a lightkeeper who moved out there for the winter with with his wife. He in order to keep her boredom at, at bay because they're the only ones on the on this <laughs> island for f- four months. With nothing he, else but he, a lighthouse. Right. He <laughs> brought her a piano. Um, because she she said she loved to play the piano. What she didn't tell him is that she can only read sheet music and she can't play um, by ear. And so he only had the one song that the piano maker gave them um, for the sheet music. So she played it over and over and over <laughs> and over and over. And eventually... Until insanity set in. Uh, exactly. <laughs> 
the uh, light keeper went insane um, and took an axe to the piano and destroyed it. Shut uh, up, for real. This is this is this oh is, my this gosh. Is this is the yeah. yeah, this is the legend. So he took the uh, the axe to the piano and destroyed it. The wife spoke up and was devastated that he took that away from her, the one thing that she loved out on the island. And so he took the axe to her. Um, and so apparently he beheaded her with the axe and realized what he had done. So he climbed to the top of the lighthouse and threw himself off the edge. When the light obviously went out, the Coast Guard at the time had to wait for the ice to melt so that they could get out to the island to see what had happened. And they discovered the grisly scene. Now, like all great sea captains, ocean legends are the most intense. They last the longest. There's to this day, people won't go near the island um, on foggy nights. When they're, Where, when they're boating. What kind of night was it when we were there? <laughs> yeah. It was the foggy night, so which is perfect. <laughs> and, and they say that um, they don't go near the island because the ghosts manifest on foggy nights. And you can hear piano music um, drifting to the mainland from the island. So there's that. That's what attracted us, obviously, to do this. Mm-hmm. The night started, or the day started, with me and Ash and the team getting on boats, but me and Ash hate boats. So that was hurdle number one, <laughs> taking the boat two miles out to the ocean. Hurdle number two is probably getting all of the equipment from oh. a boat onto a dinghy onto a beach. <laughs> Yeah, that was really thousands fun. of dollars of equipment. We did not tell our producers that that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> we just were like, surprise! <laughs> we're all the way out here, so might as well make the best of it. Here we go. Yeah. So we climbed into this dinghy, and we took three trips to get everyone and all of the um, the equipment onto the shallow beach. We then had to put as much equipment as we could in a 110 year old <laughs> conveyor belt that used to haul like rocks and stuff and, and um, oil up to the lighthouse from the beach. So they turned that steam powered horrible thing on and all of our equipment goes up this little conveyor belt and the rest of us have to hike close to a half mile around the island at like a 40% <laughs> incline on an 85 degree day, get to the island, and then the investigation can start at sundown, which was nuts. And <laughs> it I'll was let Katie, awesome. I'll let Katie take off that part because it was magic time. Uh, yeah. I mean, let's see. So I, I put an altar in the bedroom. I like barely remember this. This was a long time ago. I remember Carol not being able to breathe. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was really, I mean, Carol doesn't normally have such physical reactions like that. So I whipped out my cards and I was like, who's here? <laughs> <laughs> and the first card I pulled was the lovers. So a card from the major arcana, a card of destiny and fate, you know, um, of, you know, two people. And, you know, I use the Thoth deck, the Aleister Crowley Thoth deck. And so it's got these really beautiful images on it of these two cherubs holding hands and kind of flying off into the heavens. And I was like, OK, are we like actually dealing with this couple right now? And sadly, I don't remember the next card I pulled, <laughs> but I, but I know that it continued to tell that story. It continued to Didn't talk you, about. Didn't you? You pulled the hermit at one point in time. There. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. So yeah. much isolation out there, and it sort of the activity sort of like just continued from there. So the minute I started pulling these cards. Carol could breathe less and less. It wasn't like helping. It was almost like clenching tighter and tighter. And so we had to quit. We had to go downstairs. She had to be, we had to like take a breather. She had to breathe. But it just kind of continued on because I sort of just kept kind of talking about the cards because it seemed like that was really triggering. And so we got to the end of the night when we were all together doing EVP sessions. And I laid out the cards and one of the cards was was pulled was popped up you can see on camera you can see yeah it's on camera we got some pretty cool evidence like you were were tugged on the back of your jacket and you can see that on camera i saw that that's crazy yep that was pretty good um one of the most memorable moments for me though was in the lighthouse um we were speaking to that woman who had lived there and i felt her go by it was the coldest most distinct recognizable breeze I could ever I've ever felt 
And at that moment, we got an EVP on, I think, Carol's recorder or Ashley's recorder um, of a woman's voice. I don't remember what she said. I don't I think mean, we was, really it, decided. Yeah, it wasn't. I it don't was like to kind of like I don't like to tell people unless like it's pretty certain. Yeah. So like, I love having right. right in being like that sound was was day. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that was definitely one of that was probably the well, probably the second time that the the using the cards really like shined and really worked out really well. GRCC was the first. That yeah. was the first time I ever brought my tarot cards. We got to meet the magician. We got way. to meet the we have met the actual magician. I've never seen I was a physical being lit. <laughs> he was so lit. <laughs> <laughs> Just, he was just coming up the stairs like like Homer Simpson in when he's like the alien and he's like Whoa, and the Simpsons is like what it looked like. I'm not there, but I could feel something nasty coming our way. And Katie's like, guys, the magician is coming up the stairs, and my instincts are saying, Ty, you need to run. Everything is terrible. <laughs> and then that that's basically how that episode goes was me trying to be as brave as I could while Katie's rallying off information that I don't want to hear. And <laughs> that, and then everything else happened that episode, which was insane. That episode. Well, Katie, you, you use tools that are kind of outside of the box mm -hmm. yep. for the standard paranormal investigation. Are there any techniques or tools that you would not use or that you would shy away from in this setting? Yeah. Good question. We've considered using um, things like a pendulum, but it's since we're presenting our evidence to viewers, it almost is too easily manipulated by one's hand. We've considered hanging it on something so that nobody is touching it. But even then, um, is there a draft? We're in a lot of really old places. There's too many variables, so we don't do anything like that. What um, We used the, the, dowsing, the rods. dowsing rods for the first couple of times, but again, because it's like use of human hands, it was too much of a variable. Right. Yeah. We're trying to like, we're really trying to like bring you with us as much as possible. So um, the tarot cards present that like visual evidence. So that makes it a little easier. I think the tarot cards are really refreshing to see in a show like this. You know, I think we've seen a lot of the same tricks and the same equipment a lot of times. And that was just cool to see. I, I've tried to study tarot a bit and I get a little overwhelmed and just kind of the meanings and yeah. interpretations and to see you just rattle that stuff off is kind of cool. Thanks. <laughs> From my standpoint too, watching Katie do it is, is amazing because like, <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> blushing on radio. Um, it It's really cool though, because it's, I don't know if you can speak to this, but like when Katie's doing her tarot, it starts off very, simple and she's trying to make a connection and i swear to god you can almost feel that connection gets made because katie will yeah. katie vanishes and now she's telling someone's story in the in the cards are are the words that she's using mm -hmm. and it's like flip 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 and then the story is just rolling down it, that's it, partially why i can't also remember and recount mm. the story because i'm not like uh yeah. I don't yeah almost I'm like you're, there, man. Yeah. <laughs> almost like you're you're channeling kind of. Yeah. yeah. It's a big deal when she watches these episodes back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Shut up. So I many, went like, in there. Don't put that moment in. I look <laughs> so foolish. <laughs> That's funny. But then well, it goes in anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, what are your favorite tools and gadgets? Because we know you have them. Um, I would be remiss to say that I am not a hundred percent lover of the digital audio recorder. Mm, okay. uh, I love being able to go in and the, the tools are really cool to verify evidence that Katie, Ash and Carol are pulling up in a metaphysical sense. That's great to be able to have the opportunity to work on a team that is pre presenting metaphysical evidence. And then me having the honor to go over and try to give that more valid, um, grounding for our, our audience yep. because when so, someone has a feeling it can just be a word but then if i go over there when katie's saying there's you know a a, a decapitated woman climbing the lighthouse you know and uh -huh. i i could rush over 
with my K2 meter and watch it go to red as it passes by Katie. Like that for me yeah. is something that we can more easily share with our viewers and they have yeah. to trust us less. Um, so I love using the K2 to verify stuff, but anything else that I do with tech is less so, I guess a lot of shows will use that tech to almost catch a ghost, I guess. Mm. Like the alarm went off, we caught a ghost, the ghost is performing for us. Like, can you touch that light or can you make that uh, alarm go off? And it happens and they scream and they dance around and like, that for me, like it, it, it's almost more like a slideshow effect. I, I, I want more than that. So I've really learned where, like over the seasons, that was who I was at the beginning of Haunt Me. But who I am now is I want these gadgets to not frighten the spirits that we're working with, but really allow us to start a conversation. And that's what I, I tell people when they go on public ghost hunts is like, don't just ask for the lights to turn on allow the people to then use those as a communication tactic so you can learn more about each other. And as you learn more about each other, you develop trust and you develop conversational skills with something who maybe has been trying to reach out to someone and have this conversation for decades. And now you're able to ask them why some of these claims are happening. Like, why are we throwing plates across the room? Well, I'm not an angry spirit, but all I learned how to do so far is throw plates. So I'm going to throw a plate. It, you know, like it, it brings a lot of the fear away from paranormal mm -hmm. investigation when you can actually have a legitimate conversation with a spirit, whether or not that be yes or no answers on a REM pod or a K2 meter or doing a live EVP session where you're sitting there and actually trying to decipher what something is talking to you about. You can talk back and you can figure out who they are, what they want, and more importantly, what they need. And that is really the foundation of, of the next season that we're going into is That's like true. how we've done three seasons. If you don't believe ghosts are real yet, stop watching our show. We're done, <laughs> we're done trying to convince you. We're coming back in and we're going to try to help the things that we're interacting with and mm -hmm. help the people who have to interact with them on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Well, Ty, I have to tell you, you you're almost giving me goosebumps because what you were just saying, I so I resonate with what you just said there, brother, for real on, <laughs> you know, communicating and letting them kind of decide how they're going to communicate. And I, you know, remember in some investigations and I don't have a ton of investigations under my belt, but um, you know, in the experiments that I've done, I even not knowing if I'm getting any communication back, just, having that one-sided communication and imagining what could be coming back. I've been known to cry just sitting there, yeah. you know, because I think about those things. What if, who, who, how do we know that they have not been trying to communicate Absolutely. and they just don't know how, or don't know that we can't hear, you know, things like that go around in my head all the time in EVP sessions. No, that's great stuff to think about. Mm -hmm. Like if you've connected with this, I, I, an example of where we're going for our final episode of season four in a couple of days. Um, it's, it's a very, very old farmhouse that has only had five owners in 250 years. So like people go and they stay. The last owners had been there for 20 years before we came in and there was all kinds of paranormal activity there. Um, like very upset, very mm -hmm. rough and tumble paranormal activity. And the homeowners ignored it a hundred percent of the time and like it never went away so obviously it's trying to get a message across right we're our goal and again season one we got freaked out um but now we're going back with that that lens of it, it was violent it probably still could be i've dealt with bullies before in the physical world let's deal with some bullies in the metaphysical and let's diffuse the situation mm -hmm. let's learn what it has to say and let's figure out if there's something that we can do. And if there's not, we need to communicate boundaries for the people that are Absolutely. living there now because that's their home. And it's not fair for them to be tortured by a spirit that is, is right. upset and, and, you know, wants something that, that, that it can't get. It's a, it's a two-way communication. And when, when we go into these places now, it's a lot about education for both the spirits on the other side to be educated about the people now residing in their homes yep. and a lot even more so about the people in these homes to either come to terms with what is there and take dominion over their own space mm -hmm. and set ground rules for the spirits that are there or, you know, just deal with what's going on. Like 
Uh, These people have a kid, though, so they can't just deal. So they, yeah, yeah. There's, there's got to be some coping mechanisms going mm-hmm. in back and forth. Yeah. So yeah, it for me, it's all about conversation. You guys are you guys are young and hip peeps, mm-hmm. you know, and you've grown. I'm young. <laughs> oh. I, I and guess, she's and she's I guess hip. I'm hip. I'm not <laughs> young. <laughs> and you've kind of grown up in this what I've called the the paranormal craze, you know, of the 2000s. What do you um say to young people who are interested in getting into doing what you do? I mean, what do you have to say to those people? What I guess what suggestions do you have for them? First off, be safe. Like, I can't stress that enough. It's I, a lot of the shows that are out there. The mainstream of of ghost hunting is really great because it's opening up a channel of communication. Again, right. communication that people can share their stories and find comfort in one another. The uh, but, the huh? reverse side of that mm-hmm. openness in the mainstream is that it is it's desensitizing people to how dangerous dealing with something that is still very much a mystery can be. Mm -hmm. That's why I would say very, very, very much be safe. Consult with people who've been doing it for a while. Consult with people before you just go out and and wreck yourself. Um, Like there are things Katie knows about. I've had a spirit attached to me from two years of my life. It completely changed my life for the worse and it's just not really something to be taken lightly things like ouija boards and stuff like that like stay away you know if you can you're opening a portal to something that you don't understand absolutely can pull something in that just does not want to talk to you you know and it really is about being safe and it really is about communication with people that have been doing it for a long time. Like it doesn't need to be about being scared. I mean, you're in the dark, you're scared, Mm -hmm. your senses are heightened. Um, It does really need to be about how to either live with these spirits or how to get them out. I mean, a lot of spirits think they're stuck and they are not. (laughs) And sometimes it just takes being like, hey, go out that, go over there. You're not stuck. (laughs) Go, (laughs) you got this. And, you know. Well, I'd love for you to go into your thoughts about the Ouija board a little further because I do. I just want to tell you, we tend to have a Ouija friendly audience and kind of community here. And we're open to all views yeah. so i just thought that would be um something to point out and and maybe yeah. hear more about what you think about sure. that we used one once we've used ouija board um you know i've read messages to michael i know it can be like really um really useful and it can be a really great tool for communicating with spirits especially if you know you are in the presence of one um it's extremely useful I would um, I would throw on to that before I tell you our story about the Ouija board because that was it's actually kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, the the reason why I would strike hesitance on a Ouija board for new people is because ghost hunting, paranormal investigations, all of this is the power of intent. Right. Um, and your intent is to communicate yes. with something on the other side. A lot of times people go in without the who in mind, and so the who will fill itself in. You don't get a choice on that. Secondly, a lot of people don't know how to close the door when they're done. Right. Um, and so you basically let something in without letting it, without allowing it a, a safe way to dissipate. Right. Um, and third, there's a lot, a lot, a lot that's out there for whatever reason will lie. Um, and that's why I think Ouija boards are, they frighten me be in it because when you communicate with any spirit, um, it's dangerous to jump to conclusions of who you're talking to. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Ouija board, especially as it's spelling stuff out, it pulls you in because it's very exciting when you make contact. So when you make contact with something, it tells you it's a little girl and it needs help and it needs you to open yourself up to it. And it wants to come home with you and it, you know, and people are will fall for that. And then you have something that's obviously not a little girl that you've invited through and into It's almost your home. never a little girl if it wants to come home with you. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Um, so yeah, and like <laughs> people who use it, go for it. Be very, very safe. But that that the rule with anything like right, i wouldn't course. i wouldn't the way katie uses tarot cards you right. know i wouldn't do it the way she does it without being able to close yourself down after um yeah. even having like a spirit box conversation you're basically turning the radio into a ouija board like it's the same type of thing um but again i it's, mean honestly like i've watched the new kirk's live feed on their haunted objects and you can feel the pull on those haunted objects through the screen you know, so it's a, the same thing. Like you've got to be able to cut the ties even like through the screen because the screen itself can be a portal. So yeah, it's 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 a lot of just like anything for sure. Um, sadly, I've had so many experiences with spirits lying to me that I'm so like, careful everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's legitimate experience that you bring to the yeah. table, you know? There should be a T-shirt made of Katie <laughs> Webb saying, guys, it's a girl. She needs our help. And then <laughs> the back of the T-shirt will say three hours later, it's not a girl. It's not a girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been tricked so many times. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So I don't want to forget to talk about the rating system because that's another oh, yeah. interesting thing that you guys – do you have a very thorough um very detailed rating system that you guys use in your investigations thanks want me to run down this one yeah i got this i got this okay (laughs) so our rating scale um (laughs) is based on one to ten um it has old english words that i'm not even going to try to pronounce or remember right now come on no way it starts off with frith because i know carol can't can't (laughs) say that one she can't say obstreperous no there's like she adds four more r's when she says angiot there's two more n's in there somewhere um the only one she can say is blood road the level that we haven't reached yet in the season so (laughs) so (laughs) she's got the she's ready for it one day um (laughs) So what we do with our rating system is we we went into this thinking, how can we, even back then, how can we help people? Um, instead of just making a TV show for um, people to watch and be entertained by, how can we provide some type of service to, to our, our audience? And we decided that we were going to rate each place that we go in. Um, but we aren't just going to rate it off of the time that we spent there. That's not yeah. fair at all um, because night. we spend one night in a house that has been haunted for 250 years or so. <laughs> yeah. Like us saying, yes, it's definitely not haunted. There can be no way. It's totally ridiculous. Being Like it's one night. Yeah. So what we decided to do is that we go into a place, we um, figure out the claims and the history and the lore attached to it. Um, and then Ash will meet with us about that and we'll all assign it a pre-rating score from one to 10 based on the amount of activity um, that, um, duh, my dog. <laughs> the, uh, based, Yay, based the on, dog arrived. He's Yay. here. He's obstreperous. <laughs> um, so we rate it based on um, a pre-rating scale of the evidence before we go into a specific place. Um, we then have our night there and we assign that a separate rating based specifically on what happened to us. The final haunt me rating for each episode is an average of those two scores. So the night we spent there in a very strict investigation tactic matched with however many years of history that have gone into this place, fuse them together. And that's the haunt me rating scale so that other teams, other paranormal investigators, people who are responsible for these buildings now know where their stacks up against other notable places in Maine. Um, so the final episode of each season shows everywhere we've gone and what every ranking is of those places. So, you know, if you're heading it to, again, Sigwin Island, how that is going to stand up, you know, if you've yeah. been to the GRCC, which was that was a big one, which was off the chart. So, um, yeah, so you can for and, ghost hunters going around like right. you've actually got gotten like feedback that. This helped like prepare when you go into a place thinking yeah. that it's going to be a two and a walk in the park. But haunt me went in and we got our, our brains rocked. So like <laughs> there's that. And that's helpful for new ghost hunters as well. So you can kind of like have some kind of idea of what you're walking into. So, you know, is it safe? Maybe they're going to try a Ouija board this time. 
Yeah. Yeah. Maybe this is the place that you try that for the first time. And where we tried the Ouija board for the first time <laughs> um, was at. It wasn't that successful. It's not like the success story. The reason why I agreed to doing this, Katie, is because the the story of it was too good. It's cool. They had we were in this house um, that the family had owned their entire lives, mm -hmm. and they were super into the paranormal and stuff like that growing up as the kids were, and so they would have midnight Ouija board sessions until. And they had a Ouija board from like the seventies, probably. Right. So they and they had that Ouija board. Right, and there. so when they led us through the story of like doing their sessions when they were a kid and the thing that would come through and talk to them, in the last thing it said to them before they buried it in under the floorboards of the attic, um, they wanted us to do the Ouija board again that night to see if it would come through again and say that same word to us. So I agreed to it because it was insane to see them go up to the attic, pull up the floorboards where it had been for 40 years. So shut cool. up. Pull yeah, off, no, so cool. Pull out the Ouija board and hand it to us and said, good luck. And then we <laughs> left for the night. That is when I said, we have to do this. Yeah. Like, there's right, these two. Right, 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 exactly. I mean, and then you get into trigger objects, you know. It, that, it was both, yeah, yeah. It was both. So we did that. But our results. It was the Ouija board, apparently, they told us after, spelled out, like, I'm the devil or something like that to them. Wow. Multiple times. And I actually so actually never knew that. <laughs> that's what like because I was dying to know what they wanted us to like wanted to cross like yeah. to say, but we didn't get that. We got UTI <laughs> over, over and over again. <laughs> Sorry. Over and over again. <laughs> so it didn't work. <laughs> it was a little oh. it was a little different than Beelzebub or whatever they wanted us to Honestly. have. Yeah. <laughs> A nice little urinary tract infection warning. Oh, that is over. hilarious. Yep. None of us ended up with a UTI. No, it, I don't know. There's still more future. There's that still could, time. There's yeah, still time. It, didn't, it didn't give us a specific <laughs> time on the Ouija board. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I do want to recommend that people, I'm assuming that that rating scale is somewhere on the site. Probably, yeah, it, right? it's there. There's a Thai Tuesday that explains it. Um, there's an, like an info page that explains it. And then if you watch the first episode of each season, we rehash it and um, try to pronounce the words that we decided four years ago were a great idea to use. Um, they sounded cool. They sounded so cool. I'm an English major, and I was just basically sat there being like, oh, my God, I'm going to use my degree. And that was that. So uh, are you guys ever going to run out of haunted places in Maine? And have you been to places that? are new to you that you've never heard of? Like, have you yes. discovered some places? Yes. That's the best thing about doing this is like when we started season one, I had five places in Maine that I wanted to go to. <laughs> and, I, and I got to go to those places. And then I was like, oh no, what are we going to do for season two? The viewers took care of that for us. Mm. It was awesome. Yep. We started getting like um, the best messages of people yep. like sending us, have you heard about this place? Have you heard this legend? Would you go here? My friend owns a, or knows about a guy who has the keys maybe to this place that we could get in if you don't tell anybody. Um, and so that was basically how so seasons good. two and three worked for us. It's been amazing to have the viewers sending us on all these great adventures. Mm -hmm. um, it, Cause I'm learning about my home state, how big it is and how many Huge. insane places are there that, that I've never heard of before. It's huge. Um, it's so old here. There's so many spirits. Everybody's house is haunted in Maine. I swear. It's like a New England thing. It's Everybody's just, house has some type of house spirit. The pilgrims it. came over and they were just like, I love it. I'm going to stay forever. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is the New it England might, vibe. It really is. It's wild. I mean, we are, some places don't want the you know, I'm haunted attached to them. So some places won't let us go because we, specifically because we make a show. Um, and there are actually some places that have been with that tag for so long that they're sick of paranormal groups coming in and yeah. they want to, they want to leave their spirits alone and they just want them to be in peace. So we don't get to go to some of those places. And then there's some places that want a ton of money <laughs> to go in. So, I mean, there's some untouchable places in Maine that I would like. But it's Love amazing. To go, it's amazing but... now to see that in the in people's mindsets, like paranormal activity is so mainstream yeah. and so okay now <laughs> yeah. that you're being charged rental fees to go hang out with the ghost for the night. Yeah. And it's just like, so you're so okay with this. You've actually learned how to capitalize on it. <laughs> yeah. Go you. Yeah. That's, that's 
great. <laughs> Thank you for being okay with what we do, but also could we come for free? Yeah. <laughs> so- <laughs> well, speaking of free, tell our listeners how you know they can support your efforts. Whoa! Whoa! You guys! You Boom! Guys. That would what? be so good. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'll take it, Katie. Yeah. Um, so we, um, our, our website is <laughs> www.haunt-me.com. Um, we're also on Facebook as facebook.com slash haunt me official and haunt me official on, in, on Instagram. Instagram. Katie runs that. Um, we always, you know, we, your viewership, it matters most, you know, we'll figure out how to fund this thing from, from seasons to season. We're never going to say no to donations, but people watching the show, having paranormal conversations, talking to us about what's going on in their life, reaching out for help. We just had a client case on Sunday. Like that is why we're here. And like that, it's so We will help you without making a TV show out of it. Absolutely. (laughs) Like, so for us, funding us is watching our show and enjoying it. You know, we don't, Again, we don't make money off of this. Anything that we do get goes right back into our show. So enjoy yourself. Like, let us know what you like best, what we could change for you. Just stuff like this, Patrick. Being able to talk with people like you is is just oh. such an honor that yeah. people are enjoying <laughs> this outside of Maine. What? And and watching our show and telling people about it. It's it's four years ago when we started this. Five years ago? Yeah. Five years ago. It's wow. it's just insane. We were sitting in a in a living room. <laughs> With like stale beer and like and chips and being like maybe my parents will watch this if we put it up <laughs> and now like to see what it's become and that people are actually enjoying it is it, that's rewarding enough in itself mm-hmm. especially with season four coming up like I can't even <laughs> it's so much more of an adventure than any of the other three seasons combined what what we decided to do exclusive here on. <laughs> The Big Seance Podcast. Woo-hoo! Um, there's there's your sound bit drop. Um, so what we decided <laughs> to do was we are we've been in this for a while now. We've have way more experience than we had in season one. Both the the crew coming together and gelling um, and filming and knowing exactly how to adapt our style because stylistically the episode formats are way different and I'm yeah. so happy about that. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I have a hard time telling people to watch season, season one. one's a little rough. We're, we're getting our, we're getting our we're training f- wheels on. Yeah. Podcasters out. have the same issue. <laughs> yeah, you gotta find what works for you. And like, all we had for a reference back then was ghost hunters, and so we would go in and we would get scared, and then we would recap the evidence that we just showed you three minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, so that's sense. gone. You're just gonna see it in a nice uh, story formatted stream, and yeah. that's how it's gonna continue on in season four. But Bye. what we are doing is we're going to three new locations, which are incredible adventures for yeah. us. And then we are going into um, the the viewer favorites slash most extreme um, locations from seasons one, two, and three. So the best oh, place cool. we went to in each season. We're going back with more experience. But the the catch there is we're hey. not going in alone. Um, we decided to bring a celebrity expert with <laughs> us, whether it be a Skype call or just advice along the way in that specific area. Basically a Skype call every time. Yeah, Chip Chip was right beforehand. The sure. other ones were doing yeah. Sure. So we got um yeah. the, the new Kirks yeah. uh yeah. who are fantastic. Ah! If you guys don't know about Planet Weird, mm-hmm. learn about it, tattoo it on your body. Honestly, like the best in the world. seriously, they are like if you crave all things weird, go enjoy that immediately. They're Love wonderful. Them so people. much. So much. They helped us out on an episode that contained a haunted object. So we naturally we went back to explore a, a venue, explore that haunted object further, and we brought their massively helpful advice with us um, for that episode. We also have Chip Coffee. Came for an episode. Um, yes. He skyped the in. The most emotional haunt me episode that's ever happened. It was wonderful. Of course, speak, a lot of wonderful crying. to speak with him crying. beforehand, and then go into this place and follow his psychic lead that he had given us bullet points on what we should do while we were there, and we did, and it was oh, the it's most gonna, emotional it's, event. It's going to be wonderful. Um, and then the, get your tissues. Then the last <laughs> expert, <laughs> get your tissues. 
the last expert that we have coming in, um, we are going back to a place from that we were in uh, season one, and yep. Grant Wilson will be um, Skyping in to help us out with that as well. Shut help us. up. I so know, it's, right? It's going to be a lot of really good fun this season, that's for sure. Yeah. I am really excited for you guys. This is, is cool. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> it's fun to to hear and, and to to see, and I can't wait. Yay! Yeah, we can't wait either. I, know, I was I'm like hyped up just talking about it. I was there, <laughs> and I can't wait to watch this season. So. <laughs> well, tell us when it's going to happen, if you know. And you already kind of told us where to find you, but throw any more links out there if you have to. And then any final thoughts that you have? Yeah. So um, the season four will be starting to premiere at the end of April. We don't have a specific date yet um, because we're, we're, we're really rushing hard to make sure that these mm. episodes are finished, edited well, but like with a high level of quality because it, it the season super deserves it. Whew. So end of season four, um, if follow the, the Haunt Me Facebook group, um on again haunt-me.com mm-hmm. or um haunt me official on facebook and we will keep everyone up to date as we get closer we have a really cool photo project that we're going to be doing oh, to yeah. tease people up in there yes. um we are we're going to be dressing up in some sweet costumes yes. that our friend anna halloran is designing yes. um we're going to be the four of us are going to represent each a a very a monumental time period during paranormal um, investigation. So whenever it jumped forward, we're going to do a photo series of like druidic times, the dark ages um, will be, that's uh, Carol's photo shoot. Katie will be the spiritualism um, era and will be dressed up. Um, I will be the ghost hunting era of the 1970s. And then we'll do the haunt me coming mainstream now. And so when you start seeing those pictures come out on Facebook, that means we're getting close to our season. You guys are such nerds. I love it. I know, right? I know. It's the worst. I'm so, I I love it. So I'm just jazzed about it. I can't wait to dress up like Jim Moriarty from the BBC. And it's going to be so good. But yeah, so we we're gonna we're, we're gonna be dropping out that photo series to start like jazzing people up, and then when we drop, it'll be eight episodes this year because we filmed in six, six different locations, but they yeah. were too huge. Some um, of them are multiple episodes. So now we have eight episodes. Um, will be released every other week, and in the meantime, there'll be Tie Tuesday episodes coming out so that you can keep on the Haunt Me bandwagon, and we're gonna roll for sixteen weeks this Woo! year. And it is going to be some high quality paranormal bam, adventures. Bam, bam. Nice, Katie. Final thoughts? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just... <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm so glad to talk to you. <laughs> well, I am too. This has been really fun. So, yeah. Ty, you rock. Katie, you rock. You rock. You rock. You come to Maine and investigate with us. Yeah, we will take you to that lighthouse and drop you off. You love it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've always wanted to chill in New England, and I've not spent much. Like, I've been to New York a couple times, and, you know, I, I don't travel a lot, but I need, like, I need to get me some New England going on. We know plenty of haunted inns you can stay in. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll so plan out the road trip for you. and relax all at the same time. Or not relax, if you were me. I would... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're always welcome. Come on the up into Maine. The inns are always nice, though. Yeah, the they're spirits cushy. at the inns are sweet. Come on up to Maine. We'll, we'll, they we'll, want to snuggle. You've got a <laughs> you've got a paranormal uh, roadmap on HauntMe.com, so <laughs> absolutely to hit. Come up with the new Kirks. We're trying to get them to come yeah, up. Yeah, we want them yeah. here really bad. They're such nerds too. But they can leave <laughs> that crone at their house. That's not coming to Maine. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, if people haven't heard the new Kirk episode for the traveling museum of the paranormal and the occult they can go back i forget what episode but i'll link that into this the show notes to this episode as well so all right you guys rock you rock rock. thank you for having us this was great you're listening to the big seance podcast with patrick keller look for us on itunes and be sure to check out big seance.com for more discussion Welcome to Spectral Edition. I'm Tim Prossel. I have a pretty wild story here, and it's kind of long, too, so I'm going to get right to it. It's from the Bismarck Daily Tribune. It was published on August 2nd of 1908, and the headline reads, Haunted. House in Chicago draws a mob which is dispersed by firemen. Ghost puts 11 policemen to rout when furniture dances. 
Chicago, August 1st. Thousands of people, police estimate is 5,000, jammed the streets for a solid block around the haunted house, 181 23rd Street, for three hours last night with the hope of seeing the ghost which has driven two families from the premises and put 11 of the bravest to rout. So demonstrative was the mob that the police were forced to send in riot calls for 50 reserves to clear the streets. Time and again, the police charged the crowds without avail. They were driven to the expedient of calling out the fire department and throwing streams of water pumped by two engines into the struggling mass of humanity before the ghost was left in peace. At nine o'clock last night, after the last drenched straggler was sent on his dripping way, the police from the Hinman Street Station, led by Sergeant Lyman, closed and locked the little house of mystery and stationed a strong guard around the premises to watch all night from the outside. The Batcheldor family, which occupies the house in the daytime when the ghost has retired, went to the home of Mrs. Batcheldor's mother, Mrs. Will Luddington, 1046 22nd Street, to spend the night. All of their possessions are in the haunted house, and it works a hardship upon them to remain away. None of the members of the family are willing to undergo the blood-chilling, nerve-freezing horror of the table wrappings, the stopping of clocks, the moans moving of pictures, and jumping of furniture that has cursed the place. Mrs. Batcheldor says today she will probably call upon her church to hold sacred services in the house, with the object of propitiating or laying the evil spell that is woven about it. She says she has called upon scientists and the cold, everyday reasoning of the police to explain the phenomena without success. Now she will try the power of prayer. As early as six o'clock in the evening, the crowds flocked to the vicinity of the house last night. By 6.30 o'clock, there was a howling mob that swirled through 23rd Street from Hoyne Avenue to Levitt Street, jammed the abutting thoroughfares, and made the night hideous with moans, cries, catcalls, and hootings. "'Let me at the ghost!' screamed a young girl in shrill treble. "'If I catch him, I'll kiss him!' "'Show it to me,' said a big laborer. "'I eat ghosts for breakfast. Let us at them. Police stationed at the door of the little house had all they could do to keep the fighting, tugging mob from breaking through. When the press became too hot for the little army of officers, a call for reserves was sent in. The response swelled the little army of officers to fifty, but they were swept about in the turbulent mob like straws in a Niagara.' The fire department, shouted Sergeant Lyman in inspiration. A call brought engine companies 23 and 36. The engines were coupled up, three firemen manned each nozzle, aiming the streams in the air as a direct stream, there's a word missing there, from the water would have been sufficient to all but kill. The firemen sprinkled the mob until it dispersed blubbering and gagging. The ghost through stage fright or some other reason popular with ghosts, failed to make itself manifest last night. But Mrs. Batcheldor, however, regaled such of those as could hear her with many hair-raising stories of the ghost's appearance before. Three persons died in the house just before we took it,' she said. "'For all I know, there may be three ghosts. There is enough noise for three. We took the house from the Sitterkey family, which owned it, the Saturday before the 4th of July. I thought that they acted queerly when I asked them why they wanted to give it up so cheaply, but I was not told that Mr. and Mrs. Sitterkey and a daughter, Kate, had all died in the house. The spooks started spooking Sunday. First a picture, one, I believe, of the dead Mr. Sitterkey, over whose body his two sons were said to have fought about the will until a candle ignited his clothing, jumped around, and then fell to the floor. Then the chairs began to moan. They didn't squeak or creak, they moaned, long, low, like the sounds emitted by a pigeon. Then the clocks took the notion of stopping at seven o'clock in the evening. This is the hour that old Mr. Sitterkey is said to have died. These manifestations continued about four times every week until I felt that I was about to suffer with nervous prostration. My husband laughed at me until a week ago tonight. He had always called it some kind of a practical joke. 
But a week ago last night, Harry Ludington, my brother, was seated in the dining room. Mr. and Mrs. Charles Hesher and others of my family were in the front parlor. Suddenly, Harry, white as paste, came running into the room. I hear it, he cried. But there was no need for him to warn us. A long, low moan that ran up my spine like a mouse clinging to the spinal cord came from the room just vacated. The great dining table lifted itself in the air and moved about the room. We fled. The police were called. Sergeant Lyman and other policemen entered the house with drawn revolvers, saying it was only a human imitation of a ghost and that they would shoot the joker. The pictures started bobbing. The moan came again, and they didn't know where they were going, but they were certainly soon on their way. Boy, I, I don't know what to think of this one. I, I'm... Oddly enough, my attention is drawn to the phrase, I eat ghosts for breakfast. <laughs> I didn't know that people said things like that back in 1908, but of course that phrase came from somewhere, right? I'm Tim Prossel, and you've been listening to the audio version of Spectral Edition. I have close to 300 of these ghost reports. They're all authentic newspaper articles published between 1865 and 1918. I post one each Wednesday on my website, The Merry Ghost Hunter, M-E-R-R-Y. I hope you stop by sometime. Thanks for joining us for the Big Seance Podcast. We'd better get back to the table while there's still some candlelight left. I want to thank you for listening today. And I want to once again beg you to make sure you're subscribed to the show in iTunes or in the podcast app on your favorite devices. And you know what? If you're confused about how to do that, please contact me. I'm such a podcast nerd, and I would love to help you. Stay tuned for an outtake after the outro. But first, Jeffrey Fishbach, one of our fellow Paranerds, recently made a request for a return of the Paranerd hashtag at the end of the show. So I thought, you know what? You just earned your very own Paranerd hashtag dedicated to you this week. So, to anyone who's still listening, jump on Twitter. And because I happen to know Jeffrey's a giant Star Wars nerd as well, tweet me at Big Seance with the special hashtag Jedi Fish. And that's J E D I F I S C H. And that's actually his Twitter handle, too. So while you're at it, you can include him in the tweet if you want. It's kind of a challenging one, isn't it? So <laughs> let's review. Tweet me at Big Seance with the hashtag Jedi Fish, F-I-S-C-H. And if you do that, well, you've just proven yourself to be a giant paranerd. Use the Force, friends. For show notes, including links to anything we may have mentioned in this episode, visit BigSeance.com. Just click on the Big Seance Podcast logo or find it in the menu. You can also find and subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio. Do you have any comments or feedback? Go to BigSeance.com slash feedback to learn how to get your voice in a future show. Or you can call my feedback line, 7755-TELL-ME. That's 775-583-5563. Interested in learning how to promote and share the podcast? Go to BigSeance.com slash share. Thank you so much for listening. Unfortunately, it's time to blow the candles out. But we'll see you and light them again next time.
This is a requirement. I'm sorry. Okay. You, you made us drink the, the fake tea. We have to take selfies. Can I go this way? Yeah, okay. This way. We did this with the new Kirks, too. Shut up. This is funny. <laughs> yeah. This is awful angle. Hold yeah, on. wait. Can this we is- do it like behind him? <laughs> yeah, yeah this isn't my best light. Like this? I will do it. Hold on. Okay. You're just going to see a camera. We're going to do our best. All right. Do, do you want me to hold the selfie stick? Yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> wait, he's a blur. He's a bl- or yellow or white blur. <laughs> I'm- <laughs> Pull that little lever down to the little sun. There we go. Ready? Wait. Really? He's. <laughs> I'm, I'm freezing on my smile here. How's that? That's tiny. Oh my god, Katie! I'll just take a picture of you with him. There we go. <laughs> we'll just put you in here. Look at. I was here too, is what I can say. There we go. <laughs> and then you, you pose yourself. I'll just superimpose myself in there. I got my arm around you. <laughs> I was here too. Okay, yeah. well now now you're making me feel like I've got to do the same thing. Nice. Do it up. So, okay. Now, I'm not as uh Oh, and now you probably can't hear me. Can yeah. you? Can you put yourself there? We got you. We can hear you. Ow. Okay, now I've got the same kind of thing going on. No, it's really not easy. Yeah, it's, it's uh, really I have to it's... like I have to like dim my screen. Yeah, Katie's just mostly shadow. I'm going to take that post-it off because that was looks dorky. I really didn't think this through when I did it. <laughs> hey, ready? Awesome. I'm going to do... Um, yeah. I'm, a little, I'm a little on the uh, oh. shadow side here. Aha, here we go. All right. One, two, three. Yay! <laughs> this has been so fun. I love you guys. Yay! Thank you for having us. This has been fun. This has been the first seance I've ever enjoyed. (laughs) (laughs) 